Fantastic. Okay, so I'll start us off. I'd just like to welcome everyone again uh, to uh, the combination of business and education for our OLTC uh, Maple Leak panel office hours. And so, Carl, thank you very much for sharing the screen right there. Uh, just to start us off, uh, we're just going to go around the circle. Well, not around the circle, the virtual circle of our group. Just give our first and last name as well as the program we are currently uh, studying. So, my name is Duncan Alderdice, and I'm studying neuroscience. My name is Jenna Reichard, and I'm studying marketing. My name is Selena Bryn Bronke, and I'm studying finance. I'm Amanda Thoreau, and I'm studying elementary education. That's okay. My name's Carl. I'm a third year education student. Hi, I'm Anik. I'm a fourth year secondary education and English student with a minor in math. And uh, hi, I'm Steven. I'm a fourth year elementary education student with minors in psychology and sociology. And uh, I'll throw it back uh, now to you, Duncan. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a much more natural segue than me interrupting halfway through. Uh, so uh, when we first collaborated uh, the business and education student working group, uh, the nature of discussion was talking about, okay, what are we going to talk about exactly? And what we thought would be a great thing to go talk about was kind of what we've been doing for the past two months, as opposed to go doing uh, like just an overview of our Moodle page, which previous uh, student working groups have done, and they've done a great job at that. Uh, we thought that it would make more sense to kind of uh, progress the conversation into stuff about things we've uh, done in terms of contact, content adaptation, like like transferring uh, the in-person uh, uh, like course to an online environment, as well as the group dynamics that we've had, um, and we'll have little uh, uh, um, different things here and there. Now, can you go to the next slide, Carl? Uh, to begin with, uh, I just ask that everybody, um, you'll, if you look into the chat right now, uh, there will be a link to join a poll everywhere uh, sort of a website sort of thing. Um, so if you could click on that link and then just type your name in and you will you'll join the, uh, the sort of activity. Uh, if you do, we don't want to uh, uh, do it that way, you can also do it on your phone by texting the number 37607 and sending the code CarlZabo043. That code is on screen as well. Um, and uh, once you've uh, uh, completed that sort of task, uh, could you just send a chat uh, quickly saying, I'm done, or something just like that, just to, so I'll give everyone a chance to do that. Um, the purpose of this, in, intermittently throughout our presentation, we will be, uh, uh, there'll be sort of interactive activities where we, we will be asking your opinions on things, like a sort of survey uh, as well. And if you are an eager beaver and have completed the task really quickly, um, you can just, in the meantime, look for our faces amongst this Wero's Waldo sort of picture. Um, one thing you may notice is the fact that um, all of the boys of the group have hair and the girls of the group do not. Um, I'd just like to stress right away, this is not the reality of it. It was just the, the nature of the Photoshopping that was done that's just that's just how it turned out. So I'm just going to give like maybe like 15 more seconds for you guys to do that, and then we will continue on our messy journey through this presentation. And so I feel this is a good time to head to the next slide, Carl. So the nature of the discussion that we had between business and um, education was kind of talking about the student experience and how they were feeling. And so we asked our friends to, to like give us a sort of quote what they were thinking going into the uh, online uh, uh, semester. And unfortunately, it wasn't very um, happy, the nature of the conversation. It was saying things like, um, it's going to be harder to learn. This is a very, like, a very true problem because it is going to be a different sort of environment. Uh, people are worried that school is not going to be nearly as fulfilling. Uh, they, they fear that uh, the, the experience that they're looking for is more of a campus sort of thing. You can see a, a crying um, um, little frog kind of person. I feel stressed is something that people have been saying a lot, absolutely. We don't know what this is going to look like. We don't know what it's going to be. And just even more to build off that, I don't know how much support we will be getting. Absolutely. It's up in the air. Is your school going to give you a good program? Is it going to be adequate enough? It will be difficult to stay motivated. Now, this one is very tough because we will be self-isolated. Self uh, we won't have the, the community sort of support, uh, that, that natural um, 
a placebo sort of thing. And then finally, a bishop's a, a specific sort of thing. There will be no dancing at the gate. And this one, I know I'm very, very sad about. But just, just when you thought that all hope was lost, just when you felt there was nothing that was could be done for the student body, um, this wonderful program that bishops has uh, 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 created, the OLTC, the Online Learning and Technology Consultants, which give profs a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And we will speak more on this. I'm going to pass the mic over to Amanda just to speak more on that. Great. So um, what is our program? So the OLTC program, Online Learn Learning and Technology Consultants program, is one where university students across all disciplines come together to work on online course design. So being based on this empathetic design and the mantra design for delight, um, we work with professors to transition course content to an online setting while preserving their core teaching values and course objectives. Our perspective in this case is an asset as we're keeping in mind both student experience and the implications it takes for a professor to rethink course delivery for optimal instruction, um, especially regarding such an abrupt shift from an in-person to an online learning um, in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. This has not been easy for both students nor professors, and there's been much anxiety surrounding this shift. Our goal is to showcase that the online experience can be enriching and engaging, and that there's hope for both the students and the professors. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Jenna. Perfect, so we really wanna stress that the OLTC program represents students as partners. So our collaboration with professors is mainly to review and mobilize pedagogical content. So before we get started, I just wanted to go through a few vocab words and acronyms that we'll be using throughout the presentation. So first we have pedagogy, which refers to the method and practice of teaching, especially as an academic subject or theoretical concept. We also have OLTC, which is an acronym for our job, which is online learning and technology consultant. And then finally, we have SWG, which is an acronym for student working group, which are, is how we are divided by division within the program. All right, so now I'm just gonna touch on uh, course content. So. It has actually been really nice to see how much effort faculty have been putting into making their courses interesting for their students. Um, instead of just transitioning their courses online, they are really adapting to the circumstances of COVID and changing their course design and, object and objectives to better fit an online setup. They are changing all aspects of their courses by adding new features and experimenting with different platforms all in order to better the students' learning and offer a course that is interesting, whether it be online or not. Additionally, we find that faculty are looking more and more into alternative assessments and moving more away from the traditional form of assessment of a midterm and a final exam. Alternative assessments provide a true evaluation of what students have learned and can allow faculty to see what the students can and cannot do versus what they do and don't know. Two, of the, two examples of alternative assessments are a concept map and a description of process. One of our faculty who we worked with was very keen on alternative assessments for her finance course, and we recommended these two options. For example, students could draw a concept map of their steps to find the time value of money or write out their process, and then these forms of assessment are also really helpful when studying for exams. So another norm that was created through the online transition was the use of virtual meeting, which will eventually turn into virtual lectures in the fall. So I'm gonna go review two possible problems that may arise due to the virtual meetings, and I'll also provide you tips um, to make this process go more smoothly. So the first phenomenon I'll be talking about is the blank screen. So this normally happens when students are new to the online environment and they're too nervous to turn on their microphones or cameras during lectures. So I personally experienced this um, when beginning this job, which is all online and is heavily based on virtual meetings. So my tip to professors is to encourage students to turn on their cameras without requiring it, because you don't know what's happening within a student's life and why they may be uncomfortable to um, reveal their face. Also, um, there are other features you can utilize on specifically Teams is the chat feature, which is also available on Zoom and BlueJeans, which can host conversations during discussions as well. And for students and incoming or returning students, I would just recommend to be confident because not only does turning on your camera 
improve your experience with your peers and your professors, but it does help professors out as well because it is hard to talk to a blank screen. Um, the second thing I'll mention is netiquette. So um, as we move online, that we will be getting used to new features and new habits and norms. So my tip to professors is to put in a netiquette or a technology requirement statement into their syllabus. So a statement like this really makes expectations clear throughout the classroom. So for example, muting your mics when you enter the classroom, um, raising your hand with the little icon at the bottom, for example, just little things like that. And for students, I would just like to remind them to be mindful and respectful during these meetings and act the way that they would act in a normal in-person classroom. Um, lastly, another way to really increase engagement in the classroom is utilizing all the features that are available. So as I mentioned, the chat feature is a great way to host um, side discussions about course content while the professor is presenting. Also, specifically to Teams, they added a feature called Together Mode, which gives an auditorium view of your peers and your students, which is a more fun way of looking at the class. And lastly, Teams has channels which make it very easy to separate students into groups and then they can collaborate through that. So uh, now we have one more question for you that you can answer through the poll everywhere. Um, it is, as of now, how do you feel about virtual meetings? So I will give you a minute to answer that. Just to go off of this, um, this little poll here, I think it's interesting that um, we have no uh, negative answers so far. Actually, you can, couldn't read those because of the screen share, but um, um, a lot of potential, but still uh, still some work to do, which is, uh, I think, normal because this is just a process overall. So uh, this is some encouraging news. I believe it's coming over to me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So uh, I don't know whether any of you uh, know the OLTCs, and for the, those people who are unaware, uh, I was given the wonderful opportunity to um, come work in the Lightboard Studio at the in the in the Library Lear Learning Commons at Bishop's University, and so um, I will be explaining what that is as well as giving a virtual tour of sorts now. So if Carl, you could stop sharing your screen, just so I take over with my face perfect if everyone can see could you just give like a like just a thumbs up people in my group you can see me okay perfect excellent okay so uh obviously i'm not in my home well even though i spend most of my time here uh this is this is just a, a wonderful sort of resource it's a room at the bottom of the library it's tucked away it's soundproofed and everything it's fantastic and i'm going to walk you through exactly what it is we have just a absolute arsenal of computers and technology lighting equipment over here that's fantastic it's it's all uh, looks extremely complicated until you start to use it and you understand that it's just a bunch of buttons that you press at a specific time the concept is simple uh, moving over here we have a camera with lighting equipment with the stage uh, what we've been uh, recording here recently has been a lot of the convocation speeches the valedictorian did his speech here um, and uh, tomorrow michael goldblum will come uh, to do, the, the principal of Bishop's University will come to do his formal address. And finally, the moment you all been waiting for, dun, 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 we have the light board. Now, so the concept of the light board is pretty straightforward. All it is, is a massive piece of glass with LEDs going around the outside that for the physics, like the, the light refracts on the inside so that when you draw on it with a neon highlighter, uh, it glows, and then this image is shown into caught by the camera, run through his wires to the computer, and then I do my magic editing. So right now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go draw on the board to give an example. I'm going to do a simple equation: y equals mx plus b. And I want you to see if you can notice anything or a potential problem with what is going on here. So just give me a sec. So here I go, just with a y equals m x plus b and as well there are different colors you can use i'm just going to do it again in pink so it's fantastic it's cool now there might be something a little strange about what i've written that shows up right away and that's the fact that obviously it's backwards um so uh this is easily solved 
once we bring the, 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 the video goes into the camera through the wires over to the computer station that's worth a million dollars. What happens basically is it goes onto a, a file disk kind of, a, of this sort of shape. I take this file, plug it into the computer, open up a video editing software and easily apply an effect that flips the image. Then of course I can add a little bit of color to make those uh, the, the, the text pop out a lot more. So really the process is, is it seems complicated, it feels like we're out very much in the future, but it's like just very simple. Take the, 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 the teacher um, uh, records the content, I flip it in the video editing sort of thing. So that's cool. Um, right behind me, what we have, the same thing that the, 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 the valedictorian speaker had been uh, using and that we, that Michael Goldblum will be using tomorrow. Um, this is utilized a lot more by professors in the humanities, professors who don't tend to have classrooms that really need to use a chalkboard sort of thing. And so I'm going to walk over there right now and explain to you just how that works. So basically, we have a camera right here, as well as an iPad, which shows text and it is reflected upon the screen and acts as a teleprompter of sorts, so that the professor can stand right here, read their lecture that they have pre-written, and uh, uh, do so confidently. One of the advantages of, of this over the, the webcam sort of camera is it, it, it has a more professional sort of quality to it, as well as it can be condensed into three to seven minute sort of micro lectures of sorts, uh, which is, is a, a absolutely fantastic. One of the questions that I often get from professors when they come to use it is, how do I simulate like talking to a classroom? Because obviously if you look around, it's only me in here. There's not many people sort of thing. And that's, that's a thing that the, the, the professor tends to uh, be uncomfortable just talking to nobody. They want that student feedback. They want someone to cringe at their cheesy joke. They want someone to look at the confused when they they make a make a like a, a, a some, write something on the board that they don't understand. That's really lost. What it tends to be though is a uh, uh, that's just the initial response. Um, as soon as they start getting into the groove of it, the the professor like like really excels. It's very uh, um. It's cool to see the transformation that that person makes. So again, inside of this Lightboard Studio, we have the Lightboard, of course. We got the teleprompter with cool lights. We have the camera, the, the, the video editing equipment. That's fantastic. And we have me, the person who's in charge of it all. Um, so this brings us at the end of this virtual tour. I will pass the mic on to the next person who is talking. I believe that is a Nick. And Carl, you can share the screen again. Yes, so hello everybody. Um, before I go forward, I just wanted to mention uh, really quickly that being a part of the OLTC program has given us a lot of sort of empowering opportunities to take initiative in the, at the Bishop's community and have a hands-on role in shaping the upcoming semester. Um, so you've just seen this uh, very visually with Duncan. He's taken the lead on the new Lightboard Studio initiative, and um, Duncan and I are also a part of a team putting together um, a self-run course on Moodle, and that all students at Bishops are going to be enrolled in, and it'll give them sort of information, resources, and activities to go through to ease their transition to online school. Um, so just the job is a great opportunity, but there's also more opportunities that come with it once you have it. So I just want to point to that. Now, um, the OLTC program has brought light to one of the major benefits of having students as partners, which is the very simple fact that we have a different perspective than teachers do. We have the student perspective. So teachers have said that our input has been extremely important um, because we have a much better ability to imagine ourselves as students that's taking the course that we're designing. Um, so we, we're sort of able to recognize what will and will not work. And um, we can make informed pedagogical suggestions that we think will better suit the incoming students. Um, another thing is we are in a unique position at this point in time to bridge the gap between students and faculty. Um, this gap has never been wider due to the context of this pandemic. And 
that's because there's been so much confusion, um, so much uncertainty, and the communication between the institutional level and the students at Bishops has not been the most clear. So we're in the position that we are students, but we also get a look behind the curtain. We have a much clearer understanding of what fall 2020 is going to look like because we have an active role in shaping it. Um, therefore, we often find ourselves having conversations with our friends, with our peers, providing guidance and advice and answering a lot of their questions that would not otherwise have been addressed at the institutional level. Um, now, this this may not seem like the most important aspect of our program, but we feel that it has had a huge impact. Um, so yeah, I, I think it, we have a very important role in that. Um, I'm just gonna pass the mic over to Steven now. Okay, perfect. Uh, so because of the pandemic, we as OLTCs have been encouraging professors to reevaluate the ways in which they teach, along with revamping some of the content that they wanted to teach. Uh, and these reevaluations have really confirmed to us over the time working with them um, the fact that the professors are aiming for the highest quality of education they can provide despite the virtual setting. So even though there is the strong challenge of the virtual setting, they are really trying to aim for as high of a quality of education as they can provide us. And as a result of this, we've been uh, we've witnessed firsthand the amount of like real hard work that the professors have been willing to put into this transition. Uh, and it's allowed us to become more empathetic towards the professors we're working with along with giving us the opportunity to kind of spread the, the news of this empathy over to other students as well who don't have the opportunity to work with the professors firsthand and to kind of give them the same level of empathy uh, for the professors that we hold now. And on top of all of the hard work, we've also witnessed, instance, uh, we've witnessed excuse me, instances of anxiousness, uncertainty, and stress on the part of the professors, which is totally to be expected. And all of this kind of just speaks to the, uh, speaks to the fact that despite the conditions, these professors are really putting their hearts and souls into, into their classes. You know, we're working with professors that have taught their course not, uh, no times at all and professors that have been teaching their course for over 10 years. And regardless of that, we've really noticed that all of the professors are really kind of putting everything they have into their courses. And along with this, they've just displayed a great amount of care for their classes as well, kind of just the same way they would have under normal, uh, normal circumstances. And, you know, kind of all of this hard work and all of this care and compassion comes together to provide students with what I think is the best possible academic environment for the upcoming semester. You know, it won't be perfect. It won't be exactly like it was last year or years before, but I think it's really going to be as good as it can be because of all the work that the professors are putting in. And uh, yeah, that'll segue us into another question here. Um, this is another poll everywhere that you can feel free to participate um, uh, on with your phone. So in one word, how would you describe your experience with online group work? Sorry about that. Um, as OLTCs, obviously, we've had a lot of that so far this, uh, this summer. If you do not have much experience with online group work, feel free to, um, feel free to just kind of pre um, predict how that's going to go. Uh, be honest, this is what uh, this poll is about, so um, we'll just wait a few minutes for that. See a variety of, uh, of adjectives here. S scrumptious, that is a great word, actually. Um, what else is there? Crunchy. All right, productive, interesting. A lot of frustrating, complicated for sure. I think we all know how um, just working online in a group, that stuff that, could, that seems, can, can seem easy can definitely get complicated fast. All right, well, this is great. Um, lots of good stuff. We want to talk about how, um, as a group um, of OLTCs, how we personally have found that group dynamics um, has really been one of the strengths of this, uh, this program. And um, just to begin with, we came into this job at the, at the time where we hadn't really been able to see people this, in the summer, like it was COVID, um, it was kind of just a quarantine, and we came into this job not really sure what to expect. We thought it's going to be hard to, to get engaged and to be um, just like stay interactive and stay motivated and interested um, just because of the online platform, and it's, it's turned out to be actually much better than, than we, we would have uh, predicted. So we found ourselves really enjoying working with our group, um, our OLTC group, uh, we've been able to be, we are productive, but we're having fun doing it, and that's what we think is, is most important. So this is kind of a, a positive stepping stone um, for the semester. We think that our OLTC program has kind of been a model for, for professors who, um, especially at the Maple Leaf Universities, are trying to uh, recreate that interactive space, interactive learning space, and just the way that it's been going for us so far 
uh, we think that's it, it's it's probably a good sign. It's not perfect yet, but just the way we've been able to delegate, um, we have our, our project coordinators who perhaps uh, work with the with the our bosses a little bit more closely, and they, they kind of direct us. But uh, as a group, um, we we've, we felt that it's it's going to be possible to do that um, during the school year as well. And uh, I just want to pass it over to Amanda because um, she, like we said, we are together in our um, student working groups, and she um, kind of helps us out with directing everything with the OLTCs. Thanks, Carl. So being such a large group, um, like comprised of 22 student OLTCs, we need to consider the ways in which we make sure information reaches everyone in this case. So working in student groups has been highly beneficial because we look forward to meeting with our groups every day. And this has truly been a highlight of like this very contact limited summer um, in light of the pandemic, similar, similarly to what Carl has just mentioned. Um, so while it's nearly impossible to always meet as larger groups, we prioritize these two one hour block meetings on Mondays and Fridays, where we discuss the like overarching themes and situations that have come up during our, the week working. Um, it's a great way to, to connect with each other and um, to actually talk about problems and find solutions and all of that. And when we're all unable to meet, my role as a project coordinator allows me to bridge this gap between the instruction provided from the, like our higher ups and communicating those needs to um, my team. So my role is basically to advocate for my group and faculty members. So bringing up any issues or needs as they arise. And it's also my duty to ensure um, group productivity, but this really hasn't been a problem for us whatsoever. Um, we've been very productive and working really hard. Um, and I'm sure that's the same for all OLTCs. Um, I help record the group metrics, so statistics on how many hours we work with a certain profs and what courses we're working on, and then we kind of put those all together at the end of the week. Um, keep track of the hours, organize communication, and meetings with the faculty members. And it's overall truly been a great way to become more proficient towards um, student and professor advocacy and also uh, proficiency with technology. Um, we're ensuring that we're providing the most enriching experience for all parties in this case. And it's truly taught me to rethink the whole concept of online learning. At first, I was very skeptical about it, but now I'm rethinking under the circ uh, certain circumstances that like, it can actually be very, um, very beneficial in some cases. Um, I've become more empathetic towards the vast perspectives surrounding this shift as well, and the wide array that, of the implications that online learning can have on education as a whole. Um, we certainly can't recreate this in-person experience, but we can definitely rethink our ways of teaching and the pedagogy surrounding um, online learning so students and professors can get the most out of this experience. And maybe just to add to what Amanda said, we think this is really cool, um, once again, following the theme that this is kind of a model for the semester because um, we've talked a lot about how uh, when working in groups in, in, uh, in class this semester, there's going to be, uh, we're going to have to des designate in a group who is going to be the note taker, uh, the speaker, for example, the, the time person, just to make sure um, that you can keep track of time, and th this is kind of how it's, it, it has worked so far. Um, and uh, Amanda, as her job as a project coordinator, ha kind of has been that spokesperson for us. Um, and then just second side note, um, I wanted to add, we've been able to create a space that's very formal and professional when we are working with our faculty members. We think that's obviously essential, but we've also been able to create a space that's more casual and a little bit more informal where we uh, can talk about work, um, but we can also just kind of uh, relax and, and let go a little bit and we, we like to chat and, and talk about uh, other stuff as well and we have definitely recommended to our professors that they try and recreate that space um, online for this uh, throughout the semester because it really just helps uh, with relationships um, so that's just one thing I wanted to add to that um, so next up just passing it on to Duncan and so this is reaching near the end of our presentation and uh, we would just like to show the the, 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 the testimonies we've gotten from faculty who have uh, met with us and then of course um, uh, uh, just that so I'll just read this out loud but just with an epic soundtrack to make it more cinematic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Sylvie Baquette who worked with the business group says I had no clue of the difficulties there are at creating online courses at the same time it is a fantastic experience to have to do it because it requires that we use our creativity, ingenuity, knowledge of technology, tools, et cetera. And, the, and Avril Atkin, who worked with the uh, education department says, in the time of a pandemic where there are so many things to worry about, I no longer have to worry about online teaching. Someone says that 
The OLTC program has helped us feel confident and feel that we have everything under control. And lastly, we have, I feel excited to see how I can use all these tools in an effective way over the semester. So in the end, just the kind of takeaway is the fact that, that our program it has been a, a fantastic experience for us, for the faculty, and I think in general for the school and education in total. And so the, this next slide uh, will be another poll everything sort of thing, but this will give you guys the opportunity to, uh, to ask any questions. Now, I know Sally had a question for me in the chat. I'm just going to re read what it is. Um, are there two? Uh, so I'm just going to pick this up. Um, in the studio right now, there are two cameras and the cameras can move. They're on wheels, but the tripod pods are quite bulky. Um, so in terms of being like giving a sort of dynamic shot, you can do this, this, yes, but it's very limited. Now, if you had your own camera, like your own DSLR, which I, I believe there is one right here, that then that it is possible. There's lots to do in here. Like there, it's very modular sort of surrounding with the current setup it is right now with the, 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 the cameras are very, like it's, it's more the tripod and the cameras are professional, like, like it, it's, the current setup isn't great for it, but it does have the, the there is, there's a lot of stuff you can play around here with. So, yeah. Um, now there's, there's so, that's a good question right there. Carl, do you want to address that? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your questions. Um, I'm sorry, these are really small, so we're just going to go through them one at a time. They get bigger when you click on them. Um, do you feel the group aspect of the OLTC program will become too complicated uh, when classes begin for everyone. Um, I have to say that it's been good, the fact that we are only 22 um, OLTCs, which, which is a group that can be pretty easily managed, I think. Um, it's definitely going to be an adjustment once we, um, once we, we go full, like full scale with the school. Um, I think nothing is too complicated. I think everything, there's an, a, a, like an adjustment period, but uh, you just kind of have to like adapt, improvise, and overcome, right? So. Um, I think our generation is really good at, at just figuring stuff out, especially on the online um, virtual platform. So I think I think it'll it'll go well. And maybe um, if the professors are struggling a little bit more, that's why the OLTCs are here to try and guide them. And we are going to be continuing this work into the fall. So um, we are we are we are sure that um, it's it's going to go pretty smoothly. Um, maybe next question. Um, I wish or comment. I wish this program was around before COVID. Um, I wish it was as well. I think other schools, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think other schools had uh, online kind of platforms a little bit before as well. I think Bishops was, is a school that's really focused on the like in-class uh, small school vibe experience where we, I don't think we really had very many online, um, online classes and so that's why we had to adjust like that. Um, but ho luckily we, we've been able to. Um, I'll let somebody else answer this, answer this next question. I can kind of jump in for this. Um... I think it kind of goes both ways, um, you know, just based on my experiences at a bigger university, uh, you know, you really don't have that personal aspect that you do at, you know, a university like one of the Maple League universities. Like, you know, it sounds awful to say, but you really are just a number at those bigger universities. You can become something more, obviously, you know, as time goes on and as you do more things. But at least in the beginning, you really are a number. And it's really hard to to develop any type of personal connection to your professors, unless, again, like, you really have to go out of your way to do it. It's not like bishops where you kind of have that naturally. Um, that being said, I think it would have to scale. I definitely think, let's say, for example, if we take McGill or we take the University of Toronto, uh, 22 OLTCs I don't think would be enough, uh, especially if they open it up to the entire school. Uh, they could always do something like open it up just for the individual program. So you'd have OLTCs designed specifically for specific programs. Um, but if it was to to go for the entire university, they would definitely have to scale it up with the amount of students there are and the amount of faculty there are. Uh, and with that comes a lot of other issues like money, but I would assume if the university has that many more students and that many more faculty, they also have that much more money to do it. Uh, so I think it can be done. I just think it's not gonna be as easy and it will definitely not be as smooth as working with 22 OLTCs. You know, I definitely, I don't know every OLTC personally, but I've come to kind of recognize them as familiar people over this time, but. I definitely think if there was something like 150 or 200 OLTCs, I wouldn't know half of anybody. So it, it, it can depend. There's there's multiple ways it can go. Let's 
Carlos, I'm assuming you're being quiet because you're going to address that question to me. So how long did it take you to master the light board? Um, if you mean by the light board, the entire process, uh, I would say about like about maybe. To master it, I don't know if I'm at mastering level yet. However, maybe like the first week I had the, the general concept sort of thing. Um, it's it's it seems like a very complex like phenomenon, but it's it's not really like it's the the professor it's it's more it's the tougher part to master is making the professor feel comfortable talking to nobody because th that seems to be the biggest thing that you can you can definitely tell a difference between someone who's comfortable talking on camera and someone who's not because th like the energy that is there when they start talking about like sentence structure or or statistics or uh, basic finance, it's just not there. And so they really have to warm up to the idea of just articulating their thoughts with nobody actually listening. So I do that by commenting. Sometimes I will laugh at what, what they say. It's just, it, 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 it takes, it, it did take time, but um, yeah, that. I can go for this one. For the, so do you think that OLTCs could expand into helping students and not just professors? Um, I think so. I think at the stage where we're at, we're really focused on this course design and working directly with the faculty members, right? Because the priority right now is getting those courses up and running, at least for the first few weeks, to at least have a good solid foundation to build off on. Um, so we've really been focused and working um, a lot on that. Um, it would have been really great, I think, and especially moving forward, we are looking into maybe expanding into helping students and not just professors. And um, if I'm not mistaken, that's kind of also the goal with um, Enik and Duncan's project that Enik had mentioned previously. Um, so I think it's, I think it would be great. I think it's not just the professors that are um, really anxious about this because they are, I think students are very anxious as well. And we've had like, based on our testimonies that we showed at the beginning at the end, we have such a wide um, array of perspective um, coming into this semester. So I think having something or being able to help students or just having a service for them as well moving forward could definitely be something that we can expand on and think on doing. Can I just jump in really quickly for that question? Um, I just wanna say, I do think we are already helping students. Um, I don't think it was sort of the main priority, but I think it's just sort of happened along the way because we have um, our Bishop's OLTC website, for example. There's um, a section for helping students specifically, and it's still sort of an ongoing process because um, we're still in the process of building these tools. Um, but like Amanda mentioned, uh, the Moodle page, we're building that specifically for students. Um, so that's all I want to say is I think we already are on our way to helping. I also um, I just can take will the add next that question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Duncan. No, no. I just, I just wanted to add that it, it's not just a Nick and Duncan's project. Like there's there's the three other people there, like like Alicia and, and Charlotte. Like so, just a group <laughs> of us. <laughs> um. So for how do you work best as a group, and what methods do you use? Um. So as uh, Amanda talked about in our presentation, each uh, SWG has a project coordinator. So for the business group, uh, it's Jenna, and for the education group, it's Amanda. So usually Jenna at the beginning of each week will kind of just send us all just like a message kind of going over everything, um, what we have to do for the week. I know that a lot of uh, SWGs actually have worked really differently. Um, like as for our business group, we actually find it best. Uh, we work together mostly. So for most meetings, we find it best when we all attend the meetings, unless it's a meeting that isn't necessary for that. But then we all, uh, we all have different ideas. You know, when it's just one of us, we find uh, sometimes we don't have all the answers and when it's a group of us we're just working off of each other and we find we give the best answers to the professors and we found it really effective and we found it uh, works well for us if i could jump in and say that it's the same thing for education we've also decided to work as a group and meet with faculty members as a group rather than splitting it up um, because like uh, Selena has just mentioned, it really helps us to have these, like maybe someone's better at working with um, perusal to put articles on than someone else or has the answers that maybe I wouldn't have individually. So it's been really nice to be able to work together. And there are situations where 
it's more productive if we are one on one or two with one. Um, but we've really liked the whole aspect of working as a group um, in this program. Also, just like quickly, if you're if you're doing group work on Microsoft Teams, um, I would suggest utilizing the OneNote function. Um, it's like a little notepad and you can have all these sort of tabs. I find it so helpful for group work that just a little quick tip. <laughs> I just wanted to jump in really, really quick because this this next question here that's that's kind of highlighted it's very similar to the one before at least in the answer. Um, it's really I would I'd say even from the beginning, you know, it took a little bit to kind of get the group dynamic going. Like we were always I wouldn't say we were ever uncomfortable. I, I'm I'm with the education group specifically, but I would never say we were uncomfortable meeting with each other. But it, it definitely wasn't as natural in the very very beginning, right after our training. But you know, as time went on, it became kind of just a part of our day. Like every day we would meet at least once, if not more on most days. And it would just kind of become a natural part of our day. And, you know, it would become more than work too, you know, and that's one of the important things too. We, we would always talk about work and whatnot and what had to be done, but we'd also just talk about what was going on in our lives, like what we were doing, you know, sometimes we'd be cooking like while we were in a meeting or like, you know, whatever else I I've taken part in meetings where I've been in a car or, or getting something to drink. So it's just having that kind of natural feel of it and having kind of, just, it kind of just feels like it's kind of just a part of your life, especially when, you know, this is a job that we're working all summer. It's become so natural that the kind of group dynamic has just built over time. And for other online dynamics in the future, I think it would be important for classes, if there's going to be group work, to set up those groups in the beginning. I think having groups in the very beginning that you can meet with and even encourage students to meet with would be very beneficial, especially because if it's like, say, a first year class and you have a group project where, you know, not many people know each other, if their first meeting is to really start working on it, it might be a little bit complicated to kind of get everything going and to get people comfortable with each other. So, you know, it definitely won't be as easy as w what we've had it because this has been our full time job for the for the summer. Uh, but I think that would be one of the main ways you could kind of increase the the possible positive dynamic in the future. Definitely. If I can. Oh, I'm so no, sorry. Go, I'll, I'll be go ahead. Amanda. Go ahead, Amanda. Um, it's really helped us also that we do have informal, like we're very professional and formal with faculty and all of that and with each other we're professional as well, but we also have informal spaces or situations where we can talk more informally and have fun and kind of make jokes and play around too. So it's not something that's super serious in a way, like it is, we take our job to heart and we're as productive as we can be and we, we really want everyone to be satisfied with the work we're doing. Um, but I think it really helps to take away that more formal aspect in certain situations and talk about things other than just work. So I think that's really helped for us. Mm -hmm. Just building off just what Amanda and Stephen both have just said there, um, like to put it into like a like a like a, a specific term, I think it's a, a willingness and openness to be vulnerable with each other. And what that like what the point of an icebreaker is to stimulate the conversation beyond that superficial level like it's not just hi my name is Duncan I'm in this program I've been going like like I like I want to know who you actually are and we we like just as Stephen was saying going like at the beginning for the business group it did kind of start with that sort of testing the waters are we keeping this professional are we learning to know who each other are like what's going to happen naturally we 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 like i know myself and selena both are or and, and jenna both are very extroverted so we are naturally open to um connecting with people even in an uh unorthodox method such as this online sort of format i do believe that there's a lot of um potential barriers with connecting students between students because they're talking to a screen and don't have like the the, the what the three-dimensional image of the person looks like their smell like their body language there's lots of sort of components but so i think a, a lot of effort should be put be put and emphasized on just that that willingness to be honest with another of who you actually are and 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 destroying the facade and like the the the, the i don't know like that protective shield of your personality that you kind of portray to the world sometimes so i think that's that's one of the reasons contributing to why our group gets along well Oh yeah, so can students book the Lightboard Studio? So, um, officially, I'm supposed to say no. However, if you go to the Bishop's OLCT website and then to the Our Services tab where it says the Lightboard Studio, I don't believe there's anything stopping you from booking a session with within the sort of the, the this 
film sort of area. This also was built for us, like not just a pr professional use and by us, I mean the students. So I'm sure if you if you uh, went on the website and booked a session or talked to Scott or, or something, or even just messaged me, um, absolutely no students could use this service. I think I can I'll actually- go ahead and answer take... this next. Oh. Er, okay, I'll leave the last one to you then. Um, this next question, I think is probably the, the hardest question uh, in, in the chat so far. Um, what piece of advice would you um, give to a professor who, despite the help that we can provide, is still stressed or worried about the upcoming semester? Um, and I, I'll be totally honest, like, I don't think anyone, uh, even in our group, is not a little bit stressed. Um, <laughs> it's been one thing, like, it's been one thing building the Moodle page, and, like, it's easy to navigate it now because, like, we, we are the ones who put it together, but I still can't really imagine how it's going to be as a student where I actually have to learn from it and not just build it. Um, so I think I think we're all stressed and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because um, like we just kind of have to be like resilient and, and malleable and be able to overcome stuff. So um, I think we're like I said, we're going to continue to work into the fall. So hopefully that stress can be reduced as uh, we will all be available to continue to help. Um, and, and then we will be probably um, facing some more challenges, but I'm, I'm sure we'll figure that out. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Um, was that Selena or Jenna? I, I can. I would like to there. add something quickly based on something we, like the education group um, saw yesterday. So yesterday, one of our professors, like we were faculty members, we were talking with them about their course and everything. And um, she just ended up taking a kind of side moment and just talking about um, some funny story of something that was happening in her life. And I think, um, we ended up having this conversation about how important it is for the professor to actually be vulnerable in this situation and to be honest about um, how they're feeling towards online learning. I think that really helps uh, ease the students because they're also feeling that way. So to be able to see kind of the more human side of your professor and the fact that they're just as nervous as we are going into this um, does help. And it does kind of help um, connect both the professor and the students um, together and to help is that experience? I think that's really important, just the vulnerability of it all. Okay, so for the last question, it is, what is one thing, if there is anything, that you could change about the OLPC program, if you could? So, um, this isn't necessarily a change right now, but it might have to be a change going forward into the fall. So the OLTC program, all of its members are working full time, but in the future, each student will have a different schedule because we are still students. So while some of us can work more like 20 to 30 hours, some of us might only be able to work 10. So I think focusing on that group dynamic of like how to properly share information like Amanda discussed, and um, just making sure everything is very structured will be important for this program to continue to be successful into the fall. To add on to that, um, good good uh, thought about trying to keep the structure. Um, this comment is a little bit not going against that, but different. Um, over the course of the summer, we've kind of put together this procedure that we really try to follow, like step by step. Uh, we have a first meeting. We do a needs assessment. We we kind of follow the same uh, the same steps over and over again, which which is good because it's really consistent. Um, one thing that I don't think we should necessarily change, but that we need to remember is that what this job comes down to is having a conversation with a faculty member and and asking them what do you need, um, what do you need help with with Moodle, what do you need help with Teams, how can we help you. So we've kind of tried to maintain that organic conversation um, within within the structure, obviously, but um, we we try not to be like too like robot like right so like step by step by step can get boring we try to keep it organic a little bit and and just maintain that conversational kind of like late not too laid back but just like um friendly vibe and and just not not too like automatic if that makes sense and if i could jump in just to say one kind of thing about what i would change i think one change i would make and this is something that obviously would have to occur after this summer is to make the oltc program permanent uh you know, I definitely think it could be, it would be complicated with this many people and there would have to be less people, but I definitely think having kind of a permanent, you know, in the same way the IT help desk at Bishops is kind of a permanent staple and it's always there. I think the OLTCs, there should be, you know, a rotating cast of OLTCs that are kind of always there to help professors just because the targeted knowledge we have, I think is very valuable for professors. And it kind of, it takes some of the burden off the IT help desk as well and really lets them focus on 
kind of technological problems and you know people that are having issues with their technology and you know in classrooms and whatnot whereas we as the OLTCs can help professors directly kind of build their classes and you know do technological things that directly relate to the building of their class so I think making it kind of a permanent thing would be really really cool and it's something that has been talked about and it's something that I know our boss is kind of looking into for the future but nothing is confirmed yet.